The following program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a service of the cable television industry and your local cable company. I am an object in I motion. I am an object in motion. And I will remain in and motion. I will remain in motion. I am inertia. I am inertia. Stop. That will not be stopped. I am rotational inertia. I am rotational inertia. Revolving, about, revolving my about my center. I am all these things. I am all these things, and more. about math. I mean, you hear it all the time. Force equals mass times acceleration. Energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. But how many of us really know what mass is? Ooh, I gotta lay off the cookies. Can you tell me what your mass is? Uh, my mass uh, on Earth? I don't know what my mass is, but I know what my weight is. Do you mass know what is, your personal mass is? It's 9.81 kilograms in relation to gravity. Cool. Do you know the difference between mass and weight? Well, mass is uh, when you take communion. And, uh, <laughs> and weight's what keeps me on Earth. Excellent. When I'm standing on a scale, gravity is pulling me down, right? Well, the scale would have to exert a force back or I'd sink into the ground. The scale records how much force is needed to keep me from sinking. That's my weight. But the problem with weight is this. If I wanted to lose weight, all I have to do is come up here into the mountain. You see, I weigh less up here. And if I wanted to gain weight, all I'd have to do is come down here to sea level. You see, your weight changes depending on where you are. Here, at sea level, I'm closer to the center of the Earth, so gravity has a greater effect on me. Of course, the difference is a lot smaller than this. High on the mountain, gravity has less effect on me because I'm farther from the Earth's center. When you're up on an airplane, you're even farther from the Earth's center, so you lose weight when you fly. Excuse me. Do I have thinner to you? On the moon, gravity is much less, about one-sixth of gravity on Earth. So if I were to weigh 180 pounds on Earth, I'd only weigh 30 pounds up here. That's why, in physics, we're more interested in an object's mass than its weight. Weight changes. It's not constant. But whether I'm here or here, here or here, my mass is going to be the same. My weight is different, but my mass is the same. So what the heck is mass? Yeah, See that? That's Jenny Curry. She's only 15 years old, but at the age of 14, she was the lady street champion at the 1998 X Games. So whether she's in the vert, doing the gap, or flipping through the air, she has got mass. And because she's got mass, she's got inertia. Jenny, you have got inertia. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's a neither thing. You see, just standing here, you are proving Newton's first law of motion in physics. An object at rest tends to stay at rest. Exactly. Unless acted on by an outside force, you're not going to move. But if I do this, an object in motion tends to stay in motion. Right. Unless you hit another outside force, you can just keep on going forever. The idea is that an object tends to keep doing whatever it's doing. That's inertia. <laughs> Just sitting here like this, this locomotive has a lot of inertia because it would take a lot of force to get it to really move, right? And once a locomotive is underway, it wants to keep on going. It also has a lot of inertia when it's moving. Inertia doesn't have to do with weight. It has to do with mass. Mmm, getting sticky. Ah! Mass measures how hard something is to move. Mass is the measurement of inertia. The more mass something has, ugh, the harder it is.
is to move, the larger its inertia. Can I get some help over here, please? Now, we have weighed each one of you guys in newtons. That's the metric equivalent to pounds. 700 newtons. And you? 620 newtons. OK, now what's going to happen when you guys go off the edge right here? Gravity pulls us down. Right, gravity accelerates you down. Now, gravity is going to be pulling you down with a bigger force than you. Right, because I weigh more. OK, so which one do you think is going to reach the bottom first? Well, it should be him, because gravity's pulling him with a bigger force. OK, let's try it. We both got to the bottom at exactly the same time. Yeah, but gravity was pulling you down with a bigger force. Shouldn't it have pulled you down faster? Seems that way. Hmm. Because Dave has greater weight, gravity is exerting a greater force. But he also has greater mass, which means he's harder to move. Gravity exerts less force on Kaylee, but he has less mass, so he's easier to move. It ends up equaling out, and they hit the bottom together. That's why when you drop objects of different weight, they'll hit the ground at the same time because of mass and inertia. It also proves that gravitational and inertial masses are equivalent. The mass that's important in weight and the mass that provides inertia are equal. You can use one to determine the other. Hmm. So my mass is 450 newtons? Well, not really. A newton really isn't a measure of mass. It's a measure of force, like pounds. How much force gravity is pulling you down with. In English units, pounds are for weight, and we measure mass with slugs. Slugs? You mean the kind on the lawn? Uh, not the slimy kind of slugs. In physics, a slug is a unit of the measure of mass. But you know what? We can forget about slugs right now, and we can just use... The kilogram. Ugh. In the metric system, a unit of force, like a pound, is called a Newton, in honor of Sir Isaac Newton, who I'm supposed to look like here. Now, let's say we had a box of Newtons, the cookie, with a mass of one kilo. It would take exactly one Newton of force to accelerate a one kilo box of Newton one meter per second squared. A kilo is all about mass and acceleration, get it? It's inertia and weight and mass all rolled up into one, like a great physics cookie. <clears throat> OK, Jenny, so what's your mass? 50 kilos. And how much force is it going to take me to accelerate you two meters per second squared? 100 newtons. OK. Kilos aren't about how much you weigh. They're about how much force it takes to move you. Here's the great thing about mass. It's the same whether I'm here, 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 or here. Mass stays the same. Look at weight. It's different all over the place. Worthless, but mass is constant. Take this baseball. It has the same mass. It takes just as much force to throw. This is Mission Controller Shuttle. There's someone playing baseball up there. on Earth. Jenny, are you ready for some rotational inertia? Yeah. <laughs> so far, the kind of inertia we've been talking about has been in a straight line, a kind of linear inertia. But these guys don't just go in a straight line, they spin. <laughs> inertia. It'll keep spinning until something stops it. We call that kind of spinning inertia rotational inertia. Get it? Spinning, rotation. Oh, I think I'm going to be sick. When an object's not spinning, it tends to resist being spun. Just like an object at rest tends to resist moving, it has inertia. And we have to apply a force to overcome that inertia. And that force has to be off center. If I push you at the center. I move, but I don't spin. Exactly. But if I push you off center, 
I spin. Right. Now, that off-center force has a special name. It's called torque. And torque is what we use to spin something. Good job, Ellis. <laughs> to get going, overcome linear inertia, a skater applies a force by pushing off on their skate. But how do they apply a torque to spin? Let's go to the sports figure's blackboard and take a look. You know, inline skaters spend about as much time spinning as they do going in a straight line. But to do a trick with a spin, they have to apply torque. Where do they get the torque from? There's only two ways to get the torque that's needed to spin. See, now she's pushing off with that outside foot, giving a torque in this direction, which makes her spin in this direction. Another way to get the torque is to throw some of your body's mass at the problem. Typically, somersaults are done by throwing the mass of the head and shoulders in the direction you want to spin. No torque, no spin. It's as simple as that. I'm Sal Masakela from the Sports Figures Blackboard. The torque needed to spin something is a function of mass and the shape of that mass. Now, some shapes are more difficult to spin than others. Now, this bowling ball has a mass of five kilos, and this barbell has a mass of five kilos. Okay, Jasante, let's spin them. Nice. The bowling ball spins easily. The barbell's really hard to spin. Right, the mass is the same, but the torque needed to spin them is different because of their shape. So for rotational inertia, we can't use mass as a measurement. Because it's the shape of the mass that counts. Right. Just like mass measures the resistance to acceleration, for an object's resistance to being spun, we use moment of inertia. Ready? <laughs> Let's pause for a moment of inertia. To get something to move, we apply a force. In an equation, that looks like this. Force equals mass times acceleration. To get something to spin, we apply a torque. In an equation, that looks like this. Torque equals moment of inertia times alpha, or angular acceleration. Mass is replaced by I, moment of inertia. How much an object resists being spun. And now, back to the show. It is harder to spin you in this position than if you bring your arms and legs close to your center. Give yourself a bounce. Ah, you see, you can change how fast or how slow you spin just by changing your shape. That's why skaters will tuck to do somersaults. Bringing their mass in reduces the amount of torque they need to spin. The torque needed is way higher to spin in a layout because you have a greater moment of inertia. It's harder to get yourself spinning. Okay, so what did we learn? When an object at rest stays at rest, and an object in motion stays in motion. That's called inertia. Inertia is a function of mass. So, mass isn't weight, but how much inertia an object has. How hard it is to move or stop. Kilograms are a measure of mass, and for spinning, it measures moment of inertia. And to get something to spin, you must apply an off-center force called torque. Whoa, all right, that's great. Well, that's it. We'd like to thank everyone for helping us out today. Jenny Curry, and of course, our students, Meredith and Jasante, Mac, Edgar, Ellis, and the x Trials for helping us out with ESPN Sports Figures Inline Inertia. Man, I gotta lose some mass. We'd like to thank all the sports figures who participated in today's show free of charge. ESPN Sports Figures is presented commercial free for educators to tape and use in the classroom. Comments or questions about sports figures? Drop us a note at ESPN Plaza, Bristol, Connecticut, or the website on your screen. To order a free teacher's curriculum, call 860-766-2000. Or better yet, go to the Sports Figures website for all sorts of cool stuff. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. Network, go.com. Sports figures put your brain in the game. The preceding program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a service of the cable television industry and your local cable company.